morning, folks. Well, back again. We have our hump mold here. It's been drying now for like two days. This is pure leather hard. It is, I don't think I could press, eh, I could kind of press my finger in there, but it's pretty rigid. I could still carve it a little, and that can be kind of fun to do. Some things that start to happen <clears throat> is, uh, are that the edge here starts to get a little crumbly. So if you can put a little bevel on the edge, it helps tighten up that edge and keep it from cracking. So I'm just going to go around with my 6 inch pocket sure form, which is the best tool ever for sculpture. It can be a little addicting, so um, just be aware of that. Okay, so that edge is a little cleaner, and then I went inside and I cleaned up the inside of this mold, because I'm going to try today to first drape Okay, and then let it dry a little, remove the drape, then turn it upside down and press. Okay, now all this crap stuff, if I just swept it like this onto the floor, it would turn into <clears throat> glass dust, which is very, very bad to breathe. And you know, it doesn't take much for it to get into your lungs. So I'm just taking all these little bits and all the bits from inside the sure form and I'm putting them in water or you could put them in your recycling five gallon bucket and you'll be able, excuse me, to use that clay all over again. I'm going to be really um, enforcing, not enforcing, but insisting that you maintain your studio in a way that doesn't endanger others' health. Okay, so this is just a cloth. You can use any kind of like absorbent material, paper towels, etc. But this is just what I had around. You could use a highly textured surface if you wanted to get some texture in there immediately. But I just don't want there to be any creases that are going to hook that clay. Okay, so let me push this over. Here's the slab we made yesterday. I covered it top and bottom with plastic overnight. It's a 3 8 inch slab. Now if I want to if I wanted to um, just pick this up with my hands, it's so big and heavy that just the pressure of the clay against my fingertips, that that would cause areas that were thin and thick. And um, then I would probably get some cracking. I'll get some cracking or some creasing now, but at least I'm going to be picking this piece up without really touching it. So I'm very gently rolling this thing. See it? It's over the rolling pin. I am holding on to the pin though because if you let it go the slab can just unroll onto the floor. And believe me, <clears throat> that has happened.
here is my mold. Here is my slab. <clears throat> so let me just tune this up a little more. And then I'm going to give it some extra room and just hopefully center it and unroll it onto the mold. Okay. So I'm stretching it and I don't want to stretch it so much that I start to make cracks. So I'm just going to start working it around the mold while also sort of compressing it on itself. See these little stretchies? I want to reduce that as much as possible while still really kind of cleaving to that mold shape. It's really, I got to tell you, it really feels good to do this. To press, you know, wet clay against a solid surface, you really see how responsive clay is and how even though it's moody, it can also be very cooperative and a pleasure to work with. All right. Looks kind of like a hat, doesn't it? So I'm trained as a potter. And I think about, you know, this could be, if I flatten the bottom or added a foot, it could be a serving dish. And I could cut this out, you know, with kind of an interesting rim if I wanted to. Or, for this purpose, of course, I'm going to put this extra clay back in my bag as quickly as possible. For this purpose, I'm just going to um, cut this, I want to say like a half inch away from the mold because the slab is three eighths of an inch. So I'm basically cutting it down to where the slab is hitting the board. And then just to make sure the clay is super compressed, I'm going to go over it with a rib. It does, in a way, want to lift away from the mold. So this can help. To remind the clay of where we're asking it to stay. So I don't need to clean it up to a finished um, surface right now. And that is where the drying of the clay is so wonderful and crucial and important to work with because there are certain things I can do right now. And that is to get the big form. Get the, the basic form made and strong and then as the clay dries I can come back. So I'm pressing it into the mold, trying to tighten up that edge, which is going to be, you know, weak because I cut it. And there it is. Okay, I'm going to set it aside. I am going to pull a little cooking class trick on you. Um, I pressed one of these already. This is what it looks like. I hope you can see it all. Here's the exterior. 
Here's the rim. Okay. And now, I let this dry quite a bit. This is going, you know, toward bone dry at this point. I could go ahead and add some things to it, but it's almost to the point where I have a finished piece. So I'm just tightening up that rim a little. Voila. These can be hung on the wall, they could be stacked. They're just sort of the beginning of an idea. All right, so this is what you will have. Now you can go ahead, again, press over this and get a larger piece and keep getting pieces that are bigger and bigger. You can press the inside. You could put things in here and press the inside. You could add things to the outside of this and press the outside. But we're going to do another thing right now. Here's my mold, the original. Here's the inside. And it's getting to the point where it's, you know, it's really drying out. It's pretty cool. And I have another slab here. What if? I were to press a slab to the inside. So I'm just going to hold this and do kind of a guesstimate of the amount of clay I might need to press into the inside. I'm going to set this onto a little bit of canvas just to give it a little cushion because here's a very um, important little bit about clay. As it dries, as it goes to bone dry, it gets more and more fragile. So there's less that you can do with it and the more care that you have to take with it. If I were doing this, you know, in my studio, I would be sitting down and I would have this cradled in my lap, okay? But as it is now, I'm just gonna start dropping this into the mold. Okay. Now this is more clay than I need, which is cool. Cut away the extra and start to suggest to the clay that it find a nice little home inside this press mold. Once it sort of gets in there, you can use the side of your hand. Not, I wouldn't use my fingers because the fingers are going to 
thin out the slab. And I can only do this now because my mold has dried quite a bit. And you start to feel where you're hitting the mold. The clay just won't go any further. All right, I'm just going to go around with my finger doing the same thing everywhere. See what I'm doing? I, I'm sort of, sort of like a clamp here, just trying to get this rim to be even. And I'm going quickly because you know these these little talks are only 20 minutes and I don't think anyone should be expected to uh, watch any more than 20 minutes. So I'm giving you the real down and dirty way to go. So there it is. If I wanted, I could take this edge now and open it up to be like a rim. You know, I could pinch it, I could decal it. And there are certain things I can do now. Get it started and then as the clay dries, I could come back and tune it up. So this is your fun that you're going to have in trying to figure out what to do with this process. Okay. The other thing I could do is just make sure I'm really down there. I think I'm good. I could just go around and use the edge of the mold to just cut it. So you can imagine, once you get a mold made, maybe you actually want to make two molds of two different shapes, or three molds. The more molds you have, the more you can press and drape, and the first one you made starts drying while you're working on the second. And pretty soon, you are in production. And a lot of the history of um, ceramics, even some ideas of sculpture, are about that idea of um, multiples. And I think it's because, you know, potters make something, and then they just have to sit around and wait for the clay to dry. It's sort of like waiting for paint to dry. Okay, so there's that shape, and I am going to see, let's see what happens. Can I pop it out? Mm-hmm. Let's see. It's a little sticky. Et voila! So I won't be able to take the cracks out right now because it's very uh, wet, but probably in a half hour I can do that. Okay, guys. Thanks. Bye.